Greetings, Star Citizens, and welcome to Flight Deck. This is a weekly podcast about Star Citizen and other gamer culture topics. I'm your host, Link Static MDK, and with me, as always, is Paper Thin. Hey, guys. All right, uh, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Around the Verse 26, 10 for the Producers, Episode 3, Reverse the Verse 29, and OP.net Fog of War. Uh, so let's jump right into it. With uh, around the verse 26, some of the things they mentioned was the new M50 commercial. Uh, and actually, I think that was a Mustang commercial, wasn't it? And they also had the Imagine trailer. We already talked about all this in a previous episode. Um, but they were mentioning that there was an Arena Commander 1.0 trailer coming out. So we'll be looking forward to seeing that. I don't, yeah. you know, maybe we'll have a lot more dogfighting gameplay. Maybe. Uh, I would. I would assume so. Um, but I'm not. They didn't really mention much about it, other than they're making a AC 1.0 trailer. So I yeah. imagine it'll be a bunch of like Cutlass and Avenger shots and that <laughs> kind of thing. Ooh, ship porn! All right. Look at our new ship. <laughs> well, they also had some uh, new merchandise that they've been talking about available for pre-order. You can get uh, dog tags. There's a Squadron 42 T-shirt. I think this is like the second version of the T-shirt they've come out with. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the Mustang mouse pad for people that want to get some swag. And yeah, the the mouse pads are really nice. I would like to get one at some point. Yeah, I'm thinking I'll, prob I'll probably get the mouse pad. Um, I'm actually considering getting the official joystick whenever that comes out. You know, we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah. They were also mentioning there's a bunch of upcoming uh, events, and they're actually coming out with a schedule for 2015, so people can kind of plan their vacations and all that on whatever event they want to go to and see the Star Citizen crew at. Yeah, I don't think they mentioned it um, in Around the Verse, but I guess Citizen Con is going to be in England for really? the Squadron 42 place this year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm probably not so, going, but... Uh, yeah, probably not. I went to England last year, so... Well, that's when you went back. to Europe in general, right? Well, I just went to England and Belgium, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so we've got some Arena Commander news to talk about as well today. Uh, there are missile changes, thank God. Because <laughs> if... <laughs> missile gate, <laughs> I think I heard it referred to. <laughs> missile gate. <laughs> Every time it's gate something, God. Oh, I know, they had Cutlass Gate, now Cut we got... Yeah. Missile gate. Well, like, oh. missiles are OP. Just from the little I've been playing, it's like, oh, you can, you know, you can almost one-shot people with missiles because the countermeasures don't quite work how you'd expect them to anymore, you know? Right, and as we find out later, they weren't doing damage properly either, so... <laughs> yeah, that was that was an interesting thing to learn. Well, <laughs> um, they're also still working on, like, the matchmaking overall. I know they want to improve the stability of the client... Because I think right now they have to like refresh the servers every 30 minutes or something so that yeah. they don't get overloaded. All I really care about, though, is I want my co-op um, and my private matches back. I want co-op Vandal Swarm back, and I want private matches back. Those, yeah, and those are a priority fix, they said, on uh, Reverse the Verse. Oh, really? Uh, that That is a priority. They didn't expect co-op to not work, and it's a priority fix. Well, that's good. I know that's like... Something that you, me, and the other members of our org all want to try out together, because frankly, nobody wants to jump into the middle of flying with an underpowered ship against people that are like overpowered and have been playing ten times more than them. So, yeah, it's yeah, we just want to play amongst ourselves for a while, get the hang of things before I start plus branching we, out more. Plus, you know, we gotta develop our strats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, you shoot him. No, you shoot him. That's no, our strategy. Shoot. Shut up. Everybody <laughs> shoot together. Run away. It's a bold strategy. It'll, it'll, it'll work. We're, yeah. we're geniuses. Well, and then with um, Squadron 42, they also have some more polishing of ship landing systems that are being put in place. Landing's so hard, and I kind of like the fact that it's hard, but I just want there to be, like, a computer display assist that lets me know, okay, you're, like, three meters from the deck or whatever on the front, and two meters from the deck on the back, so you gotta level out, that type of thing. Yeah, I, I, I thought I remember them saying they were gonna put something like that in at some point, but I don't remember, for sure. Well, from what they were saying, there's two types of landing systems. You're going to have an automated and you're going to have a manual. Personally, I think like it makes sense to have both because there's going to be times when you're landing on a planet where there's no you know, right. 
control tower l leading you in, and other times you're going to be landing on a Bengal carrier where it's like, oh, well, the ship's computer takes over. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it makes sense. It's it's going to be fun to try and manually land on stuff you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I, that, that statement just broke me. I'm, like, thinking of all the random stuff I could land on or try to, especially with the LTI ships I have. Oh, yeah, right? It's like, oh, well... Yeah. I, this ship just got blown up. Well, I'm going to go blow it up again since I don't have any new parts on it. It's got LTI. <laughs> Land my reclaimer on the front of a Bengal carrier's bridge. <laughs> yeah. Although, there will be time delays before you can get your ship back again. Well, yeah. with LTI, so. Well, yeah, they got to, you know, send you right. the new one, etc. Well, right. um, I think they were saying they're also working on a proof of concept for the ongoing conversation system. So, going in with, like, that time delay you're mentioning, it's going to be, you know, kind of a you got to talk to the guys and then it takes some time for that to get to you because it's not all instantaneous either and right so it'll be interesting i wonder if like when you don't have lti if you can haggle like oh, i've got to buy a new hornet can i haggle as part of the conversation and get a better price oh that would be fun yeah or if you have like a better rep with somebody yeah like you get you get discounts because they like you or you've done missions for them and stuff like you got a hundred percent ue rep so you get like great military kickbacks for like extra yeah. gear they don't need yeah that would be that would be really cool i would love to see something like that in the game yeah that would be sweet well, and then um, for the Persistent Universe, they were talking about some logo updates. And I have a note here from you saying, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> in in, in not-so-nice words, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, I, can't, I, I this is where I disagree. I think logos are super important. And the reason for that is think of like how iconic the Rebel and the Empire logos are and like when you see those. Mm, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Granted, like, I can't think of any other, like, who cares about the United Earth Federation logo and the Klingon, well, the Klingon logo is kind of cool. Yeah. I, I'd say, yeah. like, from Star Trek, the Klingon logo is the only one that people really actually go, oh, that's sweet, you know. That's true. Yeah, nobody likes the Federation's logo. <laughs> or the or the Romulan. The Romulan logo oh. is weird. So is the Borg logo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, you're right. It is important in a way. I guess... I don't know. I guess we'll just see it when we see it, so... Whatever. Yeah, well... <laughs> yeah. Uh, we should do the Planet Express ship logo for our org. Yes. There we go. That would be an apt... That would be an apt logo for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then they're also talking about the mission manager uh, is being skinned. That's kind of the system they want to put in place where it's like, oh, you're on the fly and all of a sudden this mercenary mission comes up or somebody's being attacked and they're like, hey, help us out, we'll pay you. Or, you know, uh, certain good is no longer available on a planet as well, so they want you to import it, blah, 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 you know. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's it seems pretty, you know, what you would expect. I guess is the way I can describe it. Uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to it regardless. It seems like it'll be cool stuff. Yeah. Well, they're also talking about the Odessa and Mariana landing zones are in white box. So the Odessa and land and Mariana, I think those are two of the starter location planets, right? Like one of those yeah. initial five. Yeah. 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 So they're they're white boxing the landing area so you know you'll have a kiosk here you'll have your landing pad here you'll this is where the disreputable bar is going to be located that type of thing <laughs> yeah it should uh it, it's cool stuff i'm glad to know they're already at that point i mean that's that's pretty cool yeah well and be what what's going to be interesting is it'll be like for the first six months oh yeah, i've explored this and this looks cool but like after a while i imagine it's just gonna be like everybody knows where everything's at there you know right right oh so. It doesn't take long in MMOs for people to fully explore stuff. <laughs> yeah, all the little nuances and secrets, and here's the secret way to get up there, even though you're not supposed to be able to. <laughs> yeah, I, I can remember all those times playing World of Warcraft when people would find ways to get into Iron Forge that they oh, shouldn't God. have been able to, and that yeah. kind of stuff. Well, and you also have um, the relay system I talked about where communication's not going to be instant, so if I send a message or I send a package to somebody, it's not, oh, it's instantly there, it'll take time to get to them. Right, so now we're starting to see kind of the layers unfold of this, you know, their, like, data and 
their data running and that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm excited to see it because, uh, yeah, they're definitely going to need to find ways to get around people just using TeamSpeak to talk to each other. So. Well, especially since there's going to be that room for, you know, hacking and, like, intercepting messages and stuff like that. Um, right. I forget the ship's name, but the one with the giant satellite dish on it. Uh, the Drake Herald, right? Herald, yep, yeah. But that one, that one, you know, uh, if it's going to take time, then if you go to, like, a relay location, you can intercept messages. I think that would be pretty cool gameplay, actually. Yeah, yeah, it would be a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. Well, then, to it. they're also, uh, let's move on to the ship section. Uh, they have the Hornet ejection seat is getting fixed. And the landing gear for ships is being fixed, so it's not deployed yeah. while flying. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've gone to like third person view in a ship and seen the landing gear deployed and just started <laughs> laughing. I know it is pretty humorous. It doesn't really affect anything, but it's yeah. kind of funny. Well, the ejection seat stuff affects me because I'm a hornet. So right, yeah, same here. Yeah. yeah, and I want to get out and shoot people with my gun. Man, has that been implemented? Can you shoot with your pistol? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, you can if you're in Arena Commander. If you eject and I think you use the scroll wheel, okay, you'll pull out a gun, and it, it if you hit with it, it does damage, but it's near impossible to hit. You don't have a reticle or. Oh, this is why like we that. need private matches right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to go to that little landing pad that they got on a broken moon, and then you know everybody land yes. on it, and we all turn around and shoot each other. Yes, exactly. That would be good. I wonder if they've got the damage for people. In... I, you know, I don't know. I and haven't so I've I seen if... people yeah. shooting ships and killing them with the gun, mm -hmm. but I can't remember seeing anybody shooting other people with them that's, and trying it. That's epic. I've got to try that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, now I just want to do that all day. <laughs> right? Well, then there's also the multiple Vandal ships are in gray boxing, um, and they will apparently be revealed in Squadron 42, so they're keep, keeping them tight-lipped now. All, right. um, all they were saying was they look cool well, duh, the vandal ships always look cool yeah the one they showed looked really really cool i really liked it yeah the there's what the we know about the scythe we know about the blade um and then there was like a the corvette cleaver. cleaver i think they had a corvette size like the constellation size they were trying to come out with too and yeah yeah i mean it'll they'll i'm sure they'll have ships that are pretty much you know to a lot of what the UE has, so... Well, and the, the cool thing about the, the Vandal ships is just they look alien compared to the UE. Like, the UE ships kind of look like, oh, I could see us building that in a couple hundred years, you know? Whereas right. the Vandal ships look like just completely alien to, you know, why would you build... It, it's almost like the Reavers from Firefly. Yeah, that's good. That's a good... That's a good analogy. I would. I agree. They They really have kind of just very, you know, unique, like, almost like they're trying to, like, the Vandal prize, like, psychological mm -hmm. warfare just as much as having functioning, you know, ships. Like, right. they want you to look at their ship and be like, oh, fuck, it's this like is a Vandal. A, that's a Predator type, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll hopefully get to see them. I can't wait until the uh, single player comes out and we can start playing it. That should be fun. Yeah. But that's, you yeah. know, forever from now. Right. <laughs> Well, and then they also were talking about the Starfarer interior and exterior are in the concept phase. Um, same with the Hull C is in the concept phase as well. Um, so the trucker ships are on their way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay. I, I don't know. I don't really care because I've got my reclaimer. So if I'm going to haul cargo, point, I'll use that. I, yeah, I guarantee I'm going to get really bored buy a Starfarer and just be a Star Trucker for, like, two weeks, and, and then, like, never be... do it again. <laughs> well, you know, it depends how much money you make. If you make ridiculous sums of money doing that, you'll probably keep doing it. That's true. That's a really good point. Well, somebody in our org is going to have to do it, I would imagine, be like a... have a transport ship available. Well, know, I, was, so... I was thinking, you know, with my Reclaimer, we just hop in it for... and, like, okay, we designate, like, Thursday night is cargo load night where we split the profits and whoever shows up gets you know a share of the profits and then we use that as like our get a bunch of materials and get a bunch of money for the rest of the week 
Yeah, that's that's just that's a good idea. I think just have one night dedicated to just trying to make a bunch of money, yeah, and then the rest of the you know, so we can fund our mayhem the rest of the nights. <laughs> yep, I don't know. We'll see how it works. It depends how much money you can yeah. make from doing runs and what's the best way to make cash and how it gets balanced after you know a couple of patches. Because I'm sure it's all going to be broken at start, yep. and then they'll try and balance it, and they'll rebreak it, and then they'll try and balance that. You know, it's yeah the normal process for this type of game. Yeah, exactly. Well, on uh, FPS, they were talking about some stuff, too. There's the new weapon switching mechanic, um, which, <laughs> you know, they didn't really go into that great of a detail on. But no. So, you know. They just said it's going to have something to do with the HUD in your helmet. Yeah. It'd be, um, I wonder if, like, it's going to work well with the, um, uh, you know, uh, the look interfaces and stuff like that, like you've got on your head brain fart the the <laughs> helmet you've got the one you've got i can't remember the name of what <laughs> i'm broken the vr you are broken. the vr helmet oh, the, oh an oculus rift thank you oculus god i could not think of that <laughs> word at all but like i wonder if like you're going to be able to select your weapon then looking in your oculus at the display you know switch to oh. rifle switch to pistol that would be so sweet. Well, they talked about it briefly at around uh, Reverse the Verse about Oculus support, and they're working on it, but they're having problems. So it sounds like it's not coming anytime soon, unfortunately. But doesn't yes, mean the community so won't mod it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. I'm sure someone already has modded it, so you could play Arena Commander with an Oculus. But Probably, uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That would be really cool. That would be a uh, a lot of fun to just like look around and quick pick a gun. Yeah. Or you could use the uh, voice-activated uh, systems that people are using to, like, switch to rifle, switch to gun, you know, and it auto-does yeah. it. Yeah, I feel like with how many of those are coming out now, like, CIG might just need to build one into the game, because they're really cool and useful. Yeah. Well, and then uh, we also have the first pass on cover pieces for Battle Arena are, com are completed. So Battle Arena... Um, from everything they've been saying about it, sounds like kind of like your recreational FPS, like space paintball, <laughs> you know, for lack yeah. of a better term. And they were saying in um, around the verse that it's going to be on an orbital space station. So like my head immediately went to the cube arena from Ender's Game, yeah. where they're all jumping around boxes and crap. So right, have you seen the picture on Sandy's Facebook page? No, I have not. Of Okay, there is a picture out of the like the current state of that arena. And yeah, it looks like what I would imagine the Ender's Game cube to look like. I actually haven't seen the Ender's Game movie, so I don't know how they dealt with it in that. Right. But um it, was, it, it wasn't yeah. bad. Um Yeah. It wasn't I'll see it, at some point. it wasn't what I had imagined in my head from reading the book, but it wasn't terrible either. Like it it was it was it was a good rendering of what you would expect it to be. Yeah, I'll check it out at some point. Well, and then they were also talking about the speed scale uh, for fast crawling. So going through like a Jeffrey's tube in Star Trek and you're crawling along on your hands and knees. Um, right. So they're trying to figure out a way to balance that. I imagine it will be dependent upon what gear you've got on, like your armor, your weapons, all that too. Yeah, I, I would think there's going to be some kind of encumbrance. Like yeah. if you're carrying a foot, you know, you're carrying a rocket launcher. It's gonna be a lot harder for you to, you know, <laughs> crawl quickly. Plus, I bet it would be. You'll probably yeah. make a lot more noise too in the in the tubes. So like chances for people to hear you when they're walking down a hallway probably goes up as well. Yeah, I would think that would probably be the case. I hope they implement that. Well, you know, <laughs> and that makes me think of Die Hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yippee ki yay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, there's going to be a lot of those moments. <laughs> well, like, and I hope, like, when you've got those abandoned um, ships you find and you're, like, exploring them and stuff and you go into, like, that and, like, all of a sudden an alien grabs your leg and, like, rips you and kills you. And, oh, man. Oh, uh, so many cool things could happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, then we have Bug Smashers! Oh, God. <laughs> Where, as you mentioned previously, we learned a little bit more about the shield system and how the absorption works. Um, and how apparently they want the shields to fully absorb explosive damage, like from a missile. But right now it was currently being treated the same as projectile damage, like your ballistic 
um, cannons and your lasers, etc. Where it wasn't fully absorbing that damage, but would be like doing maybe 50% or whatever. Right, yeah. So the, yeah, the projectile weapons, when they hit 50% hits your shields and 50% goes through your shields and hits your armor. Um, and the missiles were doing that too, but they're not supposed to. Missiles are supposed to only do damage to shields until your shields are down. So that's another reason they're pretty OP right now. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, missiles in general are usually OP in most games until you learn how to deal with them. Yeah, there's a reason that's pretty much all, you know, fighter jets use these days. Yeah. They're pretty good. For good reason, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then we also have, um, there's a, I think it was Bayor uh, was the MVP this week for hosting online matches essentially without missiles. So he was, you know, trying to organize a community. Hey, everybody play together. Don't use missiles because they're OP, blah, blah, blah. So he got the MVP for the week, which is cool. I always like it when people do community content like that, where they try and host events and tournaments, etc. Right, yeah, I was, I'm was. i totally cool with that. I wish I would have uh, known about it when it was happening. Uh, I don't frequent the forums very often, so... Um, um, that's because the forums are like 90% complaining. <laughs> yeah, that's just it. I mean... <laughs> Yeah. It's like, I, I go to the forums every now and then, but then I, like, read post after post of somebody complaining about something, and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> right. That's, yeah, I usually get most of my stuff from the Star Citizen subreddit. Yeah, but, that tends to be um, a lot better environment, because people are like, yeah. hey, check this out, hey, check that out, you know. Yeah, exactly, and there's a lot less bitching. Um, but I didn't <laughs> see the this no-missile match stuff on there, so um, I wonder how he set it up, or if he was just... I think he just you know. posted on the forums and was saying, hey, this time to that time, join me. Okay, I see. So yeah. maybe he just added people. Well, yeah, he must have just, he probably just got like full matches going since you can't do private, but I suppose you could fill up a match. Oh, you could easily play with fill people up that way. Match. Like yeah, if you get that... both teams going, yeah. Right. I was trying to think of how he could do it, and I was like, oh, wait, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's still public, disabled. quote yeah. unquote, but, you know, you've right. got eight people. Right, exactly. Well, then, um,. They're also doing the size standardization for space allotments. This was stuff they talked about with the one developer uh, that they brought in this week. He's trying to make a size one consistent across the board, a size two consistent, you know, and fills up this much space and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this was, uh, they were talking to one of the designers, and uh, it was he was very vague in general. Well, that's so, like, if he gives us a number, then that's the number, and it changes like a week later, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I totally I, I, I get totally that. Agree. Yeah, I totally get it. Well, and he talked a little bit about poly rendering and how it works and all that stuff, so I'm not going to go into detail, because A, there's no reason to, if you care about that type of thing, you can look it up yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, And I'm sure a lot of people that look at this kind of game, type of game already know a bunch of that information anyway. Yeah, I was kind of just shrugging my shoulders at this part. I'm like, yeah, it's cool if you want to know about it. Well, but then, um, make the game look pretty, damn it. I don't know what that ship was at the end. You, you and I were talking a little bit, and we think it's the Starfarer. I um, thought it was, but I don't know. I don't know. It looks cool, though. I like the two Maybe turrets it's... on the back underneath. It had, like, these yeah. pod systems. The so Starfarer is a good guess, I think. I think it's the Starfarer. I, I don't know. Well, what was the... Do we have the Caterpillar? Too? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen the Caterpillar, and that's, and that's definitely not, not the Caterpillar. Right. Yeah, definitely not. I don't know. I'm not as familiar with the transport ships because I have my reclaimer and that's all I care about. <laughs> I'm like, reclaimer, looks cool, done. No, yeah. need, no need to worry about another transport. <laughs> well, that's pretty much everything they covered in Around the Verse, which was quite a bit, actually. Like, I was surprised at how much they were talking about. It sucks uh, Ben Lesnick wasn't there, but quite frankly, yeah. you know, he doesn't have to be there so long as they have somebody from development. Exactly, yeah. He'll, he, he'll be back next week, they said, so. Yeah. Well, oh, then, nice. I like Ben. Yeah, and then they also had um, 10 for the Producers, Episode 3 that came out since we last met. Um, pretty standard questions, I felt. Like, nothing that made me go, oh, wow, that really made me think about life in general in a new way. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> it's like, you know, it's kind of duh, of course. No, um, no earth-shattering revelations in this one. A man, I found the light, and it burned. Um, so, first question was, what is a producer? What do they do? Um, they talked about, oh, we're project managers, but then we also just kind of exist to help people do their jobs and 
take care of them. So yeah, done. Yeah, it, it was, <laughs> I liked I liked the way they talked about it. At least it, it was kind of cool where they don't, you know, they don't set people's schedules. They just they set deadlines, but then they help people achieve those in whatever way they can. Well, and the funny part about this type of thing is, like, you set a deadline, and they even talked about this a little bit in a later question about uh, development schedules and pet projects. It's like, you can set your de all the deadlines you want, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to follow it the next day. Right. Well, um, one thing they were talking about was the double precision, uh, which Chris Roberts has talked about in a couple of the previous 10 for the Chairman episodes, and why they want to go to double precision for the updating the map size and all that so you don't have all the errors that come with rendering right they talked about how how it's got to measure the distance and how if you get really far away from the starting point you know you get weird little bugs visual bugs that come up well and the every equation just compounds the error that you add on to it too so yeah right exactly well then you've got um the game idea idea process where they talked about is there a formal or informal process with for that and essentially yes was the answer there is a formal right. process and there's also an informal process and i like the fact that they mentioned well we do take ideas from the community all the time too so you know anybody yep. who wants who thinks they have a great idea that should be included in the game bring it up because this is the type of place that will actually listen yeah they have a whole you know sub forum for that so yeah. game idea uh, forum i think it's called yeah. it's very easy yeah. to find yeah yeah it's cool and i liked uh you know that that's Chris Roberts, you know, MO is that he'll he'll take a good idea. He doesn't care where it comes from. Yeah. And uh, I thought another cool thing, I think they mentioned it here, was that uh, maybe it was in reverse the verse. I'm trying to remember um, that they get a lot of ideas because they'll just set aside a day where, like, everyone plays the game. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone in the office plays the game. Yeah. And, uh, and so that that's pretty cool. I like that. Well, especially if you, yeah, I mean... Yeah, you get the QA guys, they're constantly playing, but how often does the guy who's developing the ejection seat system sit down and game? You know, he's probably too busy doing coding and all that usually. So it's nice right. to set that aside. Yeah, it is cool. Well, then you also have um, the modular chips and how they're going to work. They've talked about this previously where you're going to have customizations and rooms, and they're kind of redoing it. And I know you and I have talked about it where you're kind of against it, and I'm kind of for it. Because you want there to be a more, this is what that ship does, and you shouldn't be able to change it completely to make it that version of the ship. Right, yeah, that's kind of where I lie, and yeah, like trying to, trying to like, uh, like come up with a good reason for why I feel that way, like... Well, and, like, put it into words. We, we came back to it with it being, like, cars. Like, if you have a car, there's a chassis, and you can't necessarily completely swap out that chassis and make it a Winnebago. Right. <laughs> so it's like, you could have a sports car version, but you can't suddenly make your sports car into a van. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I agree. I'm just, like, I'm concerned that there'll be too much customization, and therefore, like, certain ships will just, because of the the way their slots are, they'll just be like, well, that's the only ship you need for, like, three different roles. Right. Like, who needs, who needs uh, you know, um, a, a, a an Cutlass. Avenger. Yeah, or an Avenger or a Cutlass when you can make, you know, a Constellation do everything the Cutlass can do plus more. And it's, right. you know, not that much more expensive or whatever. It, it, I'm sure they'll balance and figure it out. I just have minor concerns with it. I don't think it's going to well, be as a huge deal, but... I, I think you should be able to swap stuff out, but it should cost something. You know, it should cost time and money that doesn't make it, like, easy to swap out all the time. I think they did say that it would take time to swap the stuff out. Like, you would actually have to, like, be there at your ship right. or ha or pay, like, an NPC to do it. And it would take in-game time. From that, that's fair to me, because, like, if, if you're in real life taking a... Uh, an ambulance and you're transfer tra trans muting. You are broken today. <laughs> I am broken today. I don't know why. <laughs> but but like you're taking an an ambulance and you're completely redoing it and making it into a party jacuzzi car. You know it should take right. time. It shouldn't be something right. that's instantaneous. Yeah, I don't, I don't I don't think it will be. I don't know. Maybe after I came down from being sick, it just like took a bunch of brain cells with it from <laughs> like having too high of a fever or something I, yeah that's my excuse i'm up. sticking with that <laughs> <laughs> well and then um they were also talking about how it does in-game immersion break gameplay and that 
drove him into a conversation about the user interface and if you make the user interface too realistic it tends to not be fun or you know good <laughs> so you know you have to kind of make things work just to make them work but try and make them look good at the same time you know i've uh i've played a lot of dwarf fortress so there's no way their user interface will ever feel like <laughs> crap to me it's <laughs> Nothing compares to that game. <laughs> I hate Dwarf Fortress. I've never played it. I watched you play it once, and I'm like, how can you play this? It's so fucking fun. I don't know. Well, it's like when I first showed you the mud, and I'm sitting there, like, typing 9 million commands a second, and you're like, are you reading that? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> who who was, reads? Yeah, when I started playing that mud, like, that was my problem. It's like, I wanted to read everything, and eventually I'm just like, nope, just gotta look for the important things. But like, that that's what I was saying. Like, I was the same way when I first started playing it, because you go room by room, and you read the description, and you're like, oh, that's cool. But then, like, after about a week of playing, you don't even bother. You're just like, oh, you, you know, I'm in here, and blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's how a lot of those games work, is you just tune out the white noise. Yeah. Well, um, they also were talking about patching. They want to try and get it better than how it currently works, because right now you pretty much are re-downloading the game every time they patch. So, yeah. you know, that's definitely not something they want to keep. Um, you got anything you want to say about that? So, um, okay. <laughs> I liked what they said. It, uh, you know, they talked about how World of Warcraft really has it down good now, and I agree. Um, well, that game's been out for, what, Blizzard. 10 plus years? Yeah, Blizzard in general really has their patching you know, fit together with that, so... Well, they, they did that giant um, effort of taking all of their games and making their own launcher for them so that they could make patching yeah. easier. Yeah, yeah. And then you also have um, the female perspective they talked a little bit about. They don't want to have... They want it to be realistic and just kind of work. They don't want to make it so that, like, all of a sudden you're a female and the world is completely messed up and completely different mechanic and gameplay for that character model than the male version, which makes total sense. Yeah, I thought this was pretty much what I was expecting them to do when it came to female characters. You know, and, and I like that they're just going to use actual, you know, women as they're, you know, they're going to capture them and put them into the game instead of designing them, you know, well, from the ground up. And they're also like, we're going for realism, not stupid fantasy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the the female bikini armor of 100 AC for some reason, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that ain't gonna fly. That's just dumb. I've, yeah. I've always thought that like really does take me out of it every time I see a female warrior or something and she's in like a bikini and I'm like, really? That's what you're taking to the battle? All right. Right, I don't need that. That... And that doesn't matter to me. Yeah, you, you've you got anime for that, if you care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I really need to, I can just... <laughs> Watch any anime made since the dawn uh, of time, and yeah, it's ridiculous. Quite a bit of fan service. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they were also talking about um, including companion apps for tablets, so this would be, you know, you've got your tablet, which can control your, we'll say, banking, or your interface for your ship, however you're going to do it. Um, sounds like, yeah, it's cool, and they're going to implement it, but they're not sure what they're going to do with it. And I i don't really care. That's not for me. Yeah, I'll probably use it when it comes out. Um, I have an iPad that I could use, but, uh, yeah, it just... It's 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 a it's a stretch goal, so they got to get to it eventually. Well, I I think the people it'd be coolest for is like that guy on Reddit who is building his own um, constellation bridge. Did you see that? Right. Yeah, I did. Like I I could see like him having that as one of the interfaces. You know, he's got this tablet here, he's got that tablet there to kind of mirror what's on the screen. Right. I think so. yeah, that would be pretty cool too. I would like to have like a quick, you know, like. Thing next to me so I could like change my shield facings yeah. or you know that kind of stuff on the fly easier that, but... would, that would be interesting yeah well and then they also uh, were talking about pet projects and development schedules I kind of mentioned this when we were talking about the deadlines and blah blah so I'm not going to go into that and right. then you know missiles are OP right now how are you going to fix them nerf QQ yes. <laughs> the final question uh, basically, yeah. The, yeah, and we already talked about that too. So, yeah, I'm, I, missiles are OP right now, but they're also supposed to be because they're missiles. So I'm kind of like torn on that respect. Yeah, you know, I, I think they need. I think they're a little too powerful right now. Um, but 
I think I mean they should always be powerful. So yeah, I mean there, there's a reason you put missiles on a ship. That's why. Right, and I think a lot of the missile QQ will go away once multi crewed ships come because like the turrets on the ships will be able to shoot down the missiles, and it's not too hard to shoot down the missiles. Like well, you can already do it, and the missiles won't be instant kill for those multi crew ships either because they're going to have right. stronger shields and more armor. Yeah, exactly. So I think a lot of the missile QQ is going to start to die away once multi crew ships come in. I mean, they'll always be good for fighter combat, but do you want to waste your missile fighting the fighter as opposed to the transport? Right. Well, and then we have uh, Reverse the Verse 29, which I haven't actually been following this. I didn't know it was a thing, but then you brought it up, so I got to start watching this one, I guess. Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to start including it in the podcast, because a lot of it is just them kind of going over the stuff they talked about in Around the Verse. Mm -hmm. But they do drop stuff that is important now, like, and they kind of have been. Like, so I, I picked and choosed what I thought was uh, picked interesting. Picked and choosed? Yeah, picked and choosed. Wow. I, your your freaking disease is spreading to me now. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm just glad I'm not alone. <laughs> It's like I'm I'm okay being the stupid one if there are other stupid people with me. <laughs> yeah, we're in this together. All right. Uh, but uh, yeah, so reverse the verse is just um, uh, it's usually like Ben, um, and the community manager guy, uh, the one who does the MVP. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But uh, yeah. those guys they do they like do a live stream on Twitch for like an hour, and they just talk about stuff. Man, um, I don't so, have the time. I'm working too much to be watching another hour of the stream, and I'm watching everything I can as it is. I know that's just it. It's like I watch like everything that they put out, and I read everything that they put out, and it's just like so much. But uh, some of the highlights um, from it from this week, um, they're saying the Gladius is going to be flyable very very soon. So man, we've already got it in the hangar. But I, I gotta you know, say that ship is cool looking. The Gladius. Yeah. Like, it's probably my favorite looking ship right now. I'm, I'm seriously considering getting rid of my Hornet for it, depending on how it flies. You know? Because yeah. I, I like its look so much more than the Hornets. I really do. Yeah, I don't blame you. I, I love the way that thing looks. I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, some other stuff they talked about. Uh, we talked about this earlier, but Vandal Swarm co-op is uh, a priority fix. So that's coming. Hooray. Yeah. As soon as that happens, I'm going to be uh, playing a lot more, I think, with you and other people. Right. I've played a little bit by myself a couple times, actually. Yeah, um, I have too. Just to uh, get get things down a little bit. But man, I need a, I need a new joystick. I just can't handle this key keyboard and mouse stuff. <laughs> it Dude, makes me angry. I, you know, like That's the thing. is like Once you switch to the joystick, then you're going to be like, oh, I just don't have that precision. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. I, I almost want to. I'm I'm seriously considering rolling the joystick in one hand, mouse in the other, just to get the best of both worlds. Yeah, and they have support for that now, so yeah, it's a, it's a thing. I'm thinking of it. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna try and power through with the joystick and see how it goes for me after a couple more patches, and then yeah, you know, maybe switch over at that point. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. Um, all right. They talked about uh. The, the weapon class system, and they're just going to completely redo it. Um, so just forget everything you know about the weapon class system <laughs> Everything right you now. think it's, you know. Yeah, it's completely changing from well, what they said. Good, because quite frankly, the weapons kind of suck. Like, there's one or two that I really like, but otherwise, like, it just doesn't feel like there's a reason to swap out for a different weapon. Like, I want my weapons to actually matter, you know? Yeah, because right now it's all just under, like, basically one class or two. Yeah, it's like you have. lasers, and, yeah. ballistic. These lasers are better at that range. Those lasers are not as fun, so I don't use those, you know. Well, I, I think they mean, like, the size. Like, you know, there's, like, class one, class yeah, two. class one, class two, class three to whatever. But, like, right. uh, there's not enough difference to make it warrant worth it for me to use anything but repeaters. Is well, what I'm trying to say. Well, but so the the way the class system works, I think you're a little confused here. Uh, is like it's about the size of the gun and the type right. of the gun. I know not, that like uh, certain like guns will actually... fix certain slot mounts. I, I know that because right. like you got this slot will only go to a one to two. These slots will go to a one to three, and like this gun is a size three, so it can't go in that one to two slot, but it can go in the one to three slot. I, I get that, but what I'm saying is like the guns themselves. I'm not 
seen the need for a lot of them compared like there are definite guns that are higher tier guns than other guns right now so if oh you, if for you, sure yeah yeah they didn't really talk about that but yeah for sure i agree with you there i don't know maybe the guns will completely change too i all they really said was the class system was changing that's yeah they didn't talk about it too much other than that so i don't know maybe that maybe there will be new changes to the types of guns because like i love the idea of like the neutron cannon mm -hmm. was bad yeah it's terrible <laughs> like <laughs> it's a, it's a terrible gun that shoots terribly you know, it's, yeah yeah so maybe it'll be i think the neutron cannon will be good against transports though so i think that's why they're not really well i'm wondering if you can put it on a turret it. if it's going to be better if you're just you know it's on your turret and you got a dedicated gunner for it if it's going to be a better gun for that yeah that could be too yeah that'd be cool yeah. well we'll see um another thing they mentioned uh the retaliator was close to hangar ready so for those yeah. of you that have that big sexy bomber that i wish i had <laughs> Uh, well, that thing's enjoy. got, like, what, three rooms, and two of them are dedicated to just the missile? <laughs> it's yeah, ridiculous, like yeah. It's an awesome ship. I almost mm -hmm. bought it, except for the fact that they announced that there is going to be another uh, heavy bomber coming out sometime in the future, so I decided to wait to see what the other one is. Well, I'm at the stage right now where it's like, I'm, I'm looking at my fleet, and I'm going, all right, I've got just myself, and I want to have all these ships together, in a nice manner that I can like load them out. I I really need a carrier for them at this point, but I don't need a Pegasus. I need something that's smaller that can carry like half a dozen ships. Yeah, that that's the I, role I think they need to fill right now. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, I would think they will. I mean, uh, I can't imagine there's there's going to be like hundreds upon hundreds of ships once this is all said and done. I feel like because yeah. they're never going to stop. I, I just hope it doesn't come out like after I've bought my Pegasus and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, and now we've come out with the, the smaller <laughs> version of the carrier. And I'll be like, no! Oh, no. <laughs> like a week later they announce it and I'm like, ah. Yeah. So, uh, they, 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 uh, they did hint at uh, the fact that CIG Germany is coming together. Um, they're hiring a lot of former Crytek Cool. since Crytek took a nosedive. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So CIG's scooping them up, obviously. Yeah. And uh, they still haven't really talked about what they're going to be doing there, though, so that'll be interesting. It's the um, persistent underwater sim that they're adding to the universe. <laughs> so we're going to have submarines, <laughs> and we're going to have underwater cities that you fly oh, to, kind of like Mon Calamari. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> you're like, I whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bio Bioshock, Mon Calamari, you know, all those yeah. you know all that yeah, yeah all that good stuff. Good. We're we're getting Sequest S C V for Oh yes. See wow, Sequest. There's a show I haven't heard of in a while. <laughs> it's on Netflix. Oh That's the only reason I thought of it as I saw oh, it on God. Netflix and I'm like, Oh, I remember that show existed. I will, yeah, I watched that when it came out as a kid. Yeah, I did too. You know the only one I wish they'd bring to Netflix that they haven't yet is the uh Space Above and Beyond. Yes. That that's was a good show. Yeah. And uh, Exo Squad would be good to have on oh, it too. Exo Squad is so good. Uh through the haters. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, another cool thing that they said uh, that is of interest to me, especially because I have this ship, uh, the fact that they might make the Super Hornet uh, two crew flyable before AC 2.0 comes out. Well, I'll it's gun for you. I will. Yeah. I will gun for you, and I will not even like cry about it. <laughs> wow! I'll be like, oh well, you know, I, I have to gun. Oh darn! Yeah, yeah, it's it's horrible. It's just, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna let you fly while I gun too. So you know, uh, I'm that guy who, when like X Wing Alliance was out, was totally cool with being the gunner in your YT thirteen hundred or two thousand or whatever. I know it was like the most one of the most fun parts to me. Especially when you like start doing crazy evasive maneuvers and like your cock your view just starts spinning and you have no idea where you're going. <laughs> that's it's the best. best. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't get motion sickness. Yeah, no kidding. God. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention from uh, Reverse the Verse was that they did talk a little bit about how trading items will work in the game. There's not going to be a traditional auction house, um, but there definitely will be trading. They're kind of working out the, the kinks of that, but they don't want to do like an auction house. So, like you see in most other MMOs. Here's the thing I have against that, actually, is if they don't do an in-game version, then there's going to be an out-of-game version. Oh, that, there already are. That That's the thing. It's like, if if you don't implement it in-game, then somebody's going to do it out-of-game. So there, there's totally going to be, like, a Reddit sub-forum that's de dedicated to trading ship stuff, you know. 
Oh yeah, there's already Craigslist. there's already sites that yeah that uh, you can trade ships or you know buy ships uh, that you know aren't for sale anymore, yeah. like off the market. So yeah, I I get what you're saying. Um, I don't really have a strong opinion either way, but now that you say that, I guess I really don't care if they put a auction house in. Well, I kind of feel like there needs to be one um, because in the real world there are auction houses. So if they're going for a high fidelity universe. Why wouldn't you want a trading system like that in your universe? Yeah, I I would imagine, and there's got to be ways to like gift stuff to people. Oh yeah. Because I want to gift you know my my friends who join after we badger them enough, you know, give them like a a decent starting ship, not just like a an or, Aurora or the cash to buy a decent starting ship, or just give right. them you know one of your ships you're no longer using. Right, exactly. Because remember, kids, friends don't let friends fly Auroras. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so the origin of this quote that he's just mentioned was something I said I want to say back in high school when oh, we were God, talking was, about yeah. like X-wing versus Tie Fighter and like what well, was a good ship to fly and I'm like friends don't like friends friends don't let friends fly Tie bombers that's just the way it is. <laughs> that's the one rule we that's had nobody the... flew Tie bombers oh they're so bad. Well, they're just terrible. Like, every time I had to fly a TIE bomber in TIE fighter, I was like, my life is terrible. I hate this. It's got one laser cannon and, like, a ton of missiles, and it's just a sane duck. It, it was, God, what a what a pile of crap. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh. Well, and then we also have the OP.net Fog of War. I didn't get a chance to read this one, so you want to give a summation of what it's about? Yeah, it was a, a brief lore thing that they put out. Um where they kind of introduce uh, some of the job system stuff in a way, where they talk about jobs that are available on the job board. Um, so like, you know, protecting, uh, like an info runner needed escort through lawless space, you know, and you can apply on the job board or whatever. Um, and like the government of Vega 2 has been putting out open calls for mercenaries to help them uh, do like law enforcement and police stuff because they're trying because Vega Two is trying to become a part of the UEE, so they want to look like a reputable you know, planet that's worthy of being in the Empire. So, so you know, so it gave you a brief like introduction to what they're thinking for like jobs on the job board. So I'm wondering if then you know with you doing those missions, will Vega Two become a part of the UEE, and that suddenly changes the landscape of the in-game world? You know, yeah, like yeah. nine hundred so odd star citizens decide to focus for a month on doing the U Vega two missions, and all of a sudden it's a member world. Yeah, it sounds like that's going to be the case from everything Chris Roberts has said that uh, they they plan on having player actions affect the universe, the persistent universe. All right, so how are we so. going to, with that in mind, how are we going to cause a civil war between Terra and Earth? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, uh, I, I think do if we you, like, yeah, do we like trick like a battle fleet from Terra to like chase us <laughs> into, into Earth, Earth space. and then we like get them to accidentally start shooting each other, and you know, oh man, that's, that's what I'm. Thinking. And then all of a sudden, there's an intergalactic war, and the UE is split, and all of a sudden, there are two separate UE factions, and it's all because of us. That'd be great. I would love that. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just um, saying, Chris Roberts, I should be able to start an intergalactic civil war if I want to. <laughs> I think we've got the uh, episode name right there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's always the best ones. It's the ones that you don't even think of. Uh, um, yeah. um, the, the other part that I thought was kind of neat in this um, was they were talking about um, a job that had kind of gone awry. So there was this one mercenary outfit that was protecting a ship um, while it was attacked by pirates, and they wiped out the pirate group. Well, it turned out that in that pirate group, there was a a sec like a, a mole, like a secret agent, and supposedly this mole had let him had let the 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 mercenary group know that he was a you know not actually a pirate and was working for another company. So don't kill him. But they killed him anyway. But the company that killed him is claiming he never identified himself. So this is this to me brings up a really interesting mechanic that we're going to have to deal with in the game is what do you do when somebody's just being a spy for a, in in infiltrating a pirate or a group like that and they get killed by you know a mercenary or a legit group we didn't know um 
Yeah, clearly really didn't know her. Yeah, yeah, but what if you do? Like, how is that going to affect like your reputation? You didn't know. Will that have consequences? And so I thought it was kind of cool, actually. He never identified himself. We didn't know. That's the right. answer. <laughs> yeah, that. But supposedly he did identify himself. See, that's well, the, you know, supposedly <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> I can already see which side you're taking in this debate. Hey, I kill, I shoot, and then I ask a question or two when everybody's dead. <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty much my standard operating procedure, too. That's, that's how you gotta get by in life. You know. <laughs> the only, <laughs> life the only lessons. Way roll. We're gonna call this episode Life Lessons with Link. <laughs> oh, God. Well, um... Non Star Citizen news. Doctor Zaniac, you and I played some Killing Floor three way yeah. action. It was fun. It was fun. We uh, upped the difficulty and then got rocked. It was quite enjoyable to get rocked actually because it was it's a like in the starting easy difficulty we were doing. It was a little too boring because like yeah. I wasn't really trying that hard. Then we upped it like one level and all of a sudden there's like way more monsters. They take more damage to kill. You know. It it was <laughs> it was a lot more. Oh god! <laughs> right, and then we're like, all right, well, let's try hold. Like, we'll, we'll just kind of hold whatever room we we are in. Which was a and terrible we learned, plan. We yeah, were... we learned that that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like we're in this big wide open space. What uh, could go wrong? Yeah, we're, we're our, uh, the room we lost on. We decided, oh, we're in this room. It's like a um, a dance floor that's been made out of like a swimming pool, an indoor swimming pool. Tons of open space, like three or four entrances, and like there's only three of us to cover it, and like that was just a terrible idea. We were doing yeah. much better when we were holding like hallways and blocking sections off. We were, yeah, you know, when we were we smart and tactical. Good. Exactly. At least we look good going down, though. Oh, yeah. I was, I was tossing grenades and <laughs> shooting, you know, every which way. I was the last to go down, but that doesn't mean anything when there's 40 monsters on your face. <laughs> Oh, yeah, fun game. Yeah, definitely. I enjoy that FPS combat, so I'm hoping that level of realism without crosshairs, etc., is transferred into the FPS for Star Citizen. Yeah, yeah, me too. But, like, better. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and then, um, anime, movie, TV, comic book news, there was, uh, Old Noah Zero, which was an anime you and I had, like, liked from the first season. Yeah. has come back for season two and we I, from talking with you about it it sounds like we're kind of on the same page of we're not really liking the direction it's taken for season two so far it's only got an episode so it's yeah. harsh to do judge but yeah yeah it's so hard to say because like apparently when you get killed you don't die in this anime like, <laughs> way, way too much plot well, armor that's the thing i've always hated about a lot of animes in general is like they go beyond where they should have stopped. Like, this would have been a great anime to me if it had stopped, and they could have had done a season two until they reintroduced characters who should have died in the final episode, and you thought it died, but all of a sudden they come back. Right, yeah, it was it was, it was, was jarring, to say the least. Um, I mean, it, the show has great animation. I really like the look of the show. Um, I think the dialogue's usually pretty good. Um, the first season, I thought the plot was pretty good, if a little rushed, but it's only 12 episodes, so, you know, right. it is what it is. Um, and I like the universe they've set up. I think it's kind of interesting. But, yeah, this, it, it just, like, kind of threw me for a loop, where I'm like, really? So they are going to just, you know, double down on nobody actually died, <laughs> even though everybody got shot in the head. And Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, I, there was a lot of blood, and not a single person died. That's That's interesting. <laughs> It's very interesting. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm kind of hoping, like, so or, or I don't know if you know this, but originally, um, like, the first couple episodes were planned out by Gen Urobuchi of Madoka Magica and Black Lagoon fame, mm -hmm. um, the guy who uh, came up with those concepts. And he came up with the original concept for the show, but he didn't, he just kind of came up with a concept and given, didn't give them an ending or anything like that. So, like, other people took it over and are running with it now and it's just like he just needs to step back in and be like whoa guys see so, guys you know i felt the first season was solid it was a bit rushed but like you said it was only 12 episodes so i thought the first season was rather solid but now the first episode of the second season has kind of undone that solid foundation to me and like this yeah. isn't even the first anime to ever do that to me it's like uh dragon ball z for example if you end it after cell saga it's a great great show 
but then they right. continue. Bleach, if you end it after the big fight between Ichigo and um oh god, I forget to get the main villain's fight, but there's this main there's this fight that happens, he loses all his powers. But then they do another arc after that. And like, no, end it. It's it's a great ending. And they right. always do this in animes like that where it's they go one step too far after they have a complete um story and plot that's filled out. Right. And this is why I really prefer animes that I know are just going to have a run that has a predetermined amount of time and whatever and an ending and they know what what they're doing which is why a lot of manga ab adaptations are usually pretty good cowboy um, especially bebop. if the manga's finished well cowboy bebop wasn't a manga adaptation actually but yeah you're right, but you knew it was it was an ending you knew there would right. be an ending yeah right exactly that's a great example of a show that just had a flawless execution of a you know beginning and ending uh and made it a great show. Um, other ones I can think of off the top of my head, stuff like Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Um, Which I still haven't on. finished. Yeah. Neon Genesis Evangelion. Like, that had... You know, I think 26 episodes is actually about perfect for... For most for of anime. them, yeah. yeah. Samurai yeah. Shampoo, Berserk, oh, Gungrave. Samurai Shampoo, so good. Oh, yeah, Berserk, so good. Even though Berserk has a lot more that takes place after... Right, but the, the way they ended it, it was a complete story. That's, yeah. that's my thing. That's is like, I'm fine if there's more and there's actual more content out there, but if you end the anime itself as a complete story, who cares? Like, right. Claymore, that they botched that crap for the yeah, last two. Did. Like, Claymore follows the manga until, like, the last two episodes, and, like, the first 24 episodes, or however many long it is, great. Those last two, who, what the hell? Yeah, you know, that it was show terrible. got really weird at the end. I was like, well, it was not manga yeah. oriented. And they've actually yeah. since then finished the manga. Like it's done now. Um, right. And like it, it's a great ending to it. It's just you know you'd need another twenty six episodes to get there in the anime. Right. Right. Well, and then they also have uh, some news about upcoming stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Oh, I. I don't, you might not have seen it. I just updated this. Like, oh. not too long ago. Another yeah. anime I, I wanted to talk about real quick uh, was the second season of Durara. Oh, God. Just uh, started. <laughs> you'd I think you'd like that show. I don't I know if you've seen it or not. Here's the problem is, like, we always recommend stuff to each other. And we're like, oh, you got to see this. But then there's then we end up getting, like, these lists that are, like, 40 things long that you need to watch. And it's like, oh, my God. I, gotta, I don't even remember half the stuff you've told me I need to watch, which I haven't watched. I still need to watch Gungrave. I yeah, know I do. That's that's the only one I'm gonna recommend from now on until you watch it because I like it so much. <laughs> you know, right. it's like don't don't judge it by the first episode. Don't even judge it by like the first episode, and then like another half. I think it's like the there's a giant flashback that starts in like episode two or three, and then you know it all makes sense by about episode twenty of what happens in the first episode. But you watch the first step of your episode and you're like, what the heck's going on? So it's like almost exactly like Berserk was in that respect. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. fine with that. I will I will get around to watching it soon. Uh <laughs> it's I, I I don't have a lot to watch right now because the only thing I'm watching in the new season is the Aldenoa Zero season two and Durara season two. Right. I think that's well, that's yeah, all I'm watching. Lock Horizon right now. two. Oh yeah, Lock Horizon's still running. Fairy Tale's still running. I've it's stopped on Fairy Tale because I'm so far ahead in the manga. Yeah, I don't blame you. It, they're in a filler arc, I think. Anyway. Oh god, I hate filler I know. arcs. <laughs> I know. <it's> <laughs> the Naruto and Bleach broke me when it comes to filler arcs. I can never watch <laughs> another filler arc again. I don't care how much I like the anime. Yeah, I I, I don't blame you. I'm just pow I'm just powering through it until they get to the good stuff again. Oh man, don't don't uh, fall in that trap. Naruto is like three years or something that they finally got back to the good stuff well it gives me something to watch i i I've, i'm actually to the point where i'm running out of like new stuff that's coming out to watch so oh god um yeah so it's it, i'm fine with it it just gives me something to like veg out and watch for 20 minutes nice well and then yeah. um upcoming stuff uh, as i was mentioning we've got some upcoming stuff for the channel and our overall internet persona uh um, right. there's new logo coming um so that's in research and development quote unquote right now i.e yep. you know we're looking at stuff and seeing what we like and then uh we have uh instagram account which we've started which was recommended to us by people much smarter than us that know what they're doing with internet uh <laughs> communication yeah. so 
So we have a we'll, – we'll introduce him at some point. I'm trying to get him on the podcast. I wanted to have him on when you were on vacation, but he wasn't able to make it. Right. Um, we have a, a new guy that's working with us behind the scenes um, who specializes in, like, uh, internet and social media stuff. Um, he does that for a living, actually. Um, and he also does some graphic design, so uh, he's uh, helping us out with a new logo and some other, you know – graphic stuff so that we yeah. don't wait we're not gonna rely on my yeah. barely passable knowledge of paint.net <laughs> yeah exactly. we're, <laughs> we're, we're just we're just struggling right now and uh he's gonna help us out a lot and uh yeah he we got we actually got the first iterations of the logos and we gave him our feedback and suggestions so he's working on the, the redesign right now and uh, hopefully in the next week or two we'll have some new stuff to put up sweet and i don't know what i'm doing with instagram yet i i I'll give you the information for the account since I haven't done that because I just opened it yesterday. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we take pictures and upload them and then people look at them. Cool. What I'm gathering. And, so, uh, so I guess I'll that means we need to start of... taking pictures and screenshots. Yeah, I'll take some pictures of, like, we should do, uh, I don't know, my yeah. Cowboy Bebop figurines. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a I'll take a, sc- a picture of my uh, Star Wars book collection that will that'll go over well. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, I'll take a picture of my lightsaber. Oh, there you go. That's every every nerdy cool. object we own will have a picture oh, of it. Oh boy, that's I'll, a lot. I'll take a picture of my anime collection. That's and... a lot of content. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on this. Let's get on this. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm thinking actually we should do some sort of in in game screenshots and we can do. Um, some promotional yeah. stuff like that too for when we want to start running tournaments and things like that for people. So for sure, yeah, we need to start stepping up our uh, our internet social media game. Well, now that we have a login system that's not eyeballingly gouging awful, <laughs> you know, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. So yeah, so yeah, new fun stuff coming up. Uh, hopefully, you guys pay attention to it. We'll link to the Instagram stuff probably next week once we actually have some stuff that's worth putting up. We'll put it up on Twitter. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and if you guys have cool Star Citizen or Gamer Culture stuff you want us to promote, you know, send it our way and we'll, you know, feel free to post that too. Yeah, for sure. If there's stuff you want to pick our brains about, just post in the comments and yep. we'll we'll answer any question or anything you... Anything you want to hear us talk about, etc. Yeah. If you want to know what my favorite kind of pop tart is, just ask. It's raspberry, but just oh, ask. Blueberry, come on. No, oh, blah, blah. Blueberry. Gross. Blueberry. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Flight Deck. We will see you guys next week. Peace.